Right. Now, let's do some mail relay stuff. I have prepared my environment here, and the environment looks like that. And we're gonna essentially experiment with sending emails, and we're gonna see how this can be weaponized for potential engagements. So, give you an idea what we're gonna do, and what's the whole idea behind it. This is my environment. So, this is my Active Directory, this is my firewall, and it's all virtual machine inside a server. Now, on this internal Active Directory, you can see that it has a IP range of 172.66060 or 0 24. And each of the systems are inside this subnet of 172 something. Now, externally to these systems, externally are my Kali, my Windows, and so on. But now we're not going to take a look that much in the, into what happens as outsider. But we can actually take a look of what happens inside. And here on the one of the servers on the DC01, I have installed a mail server. And I have a video about that. So if you want to know how to install the mail server and how to set up the mail server, I have a video. Click it into a video description. It's going to be there and you're going to see it. Now, what this mail server allows me to do is to actually send emails. And there are various ways on how you can test if you can send emails and test for a specific mail release. Now on my client system, I have downloaded a Thunderbox. And inside this Thunderbox, I'm using that as an email client, but in a, let's say, regular perspective, regular engagement, regular environment, uh, you would see things like Outlook. Most of the time, you're going to see Outlook. So generally, there is no company which do not have mail servers and which do not send emails, right? That's the core of the company. So everyone does it. The point for us is to find where it is and if we can abuse it to perform phishing attacks. Now, the easiest way to find the mail server is to do an nmap scan and scan for port 25. So in that case, if I do in my plan 72, 60, 60, 50, because that's my DC, and just to save time, because I know that there is a mail server, I can do port 25. If you run that NMAP scan, you can see it's open. So when you see that SMTP is open, then this system is exactly a mail server. You can try to abuse it. All right. The next thing you will also want to do is if you are onto external, and because this is also applicable for both cases, if you have an external system, you can try to scan the DNS and see the DNS records. By doing so, you can find the MX records, and by doing so, you can try to find the mail server. So, for example, you can use things like DNS dumpster, which is super nice and I highly recommend it. DNS dumpster. And for example, here you can try, let's specify like google.com. You can run a test. You can scroll a little bit down and you can find MX records or just search for MX like that. And here you can see the mail server of Google, which in that case is smtpgoogle.com. Now I doubt the Google is vulnerable to mail relays, but we're not going to test it because it's not ethical. But here you can also make sure that you can specify your domain that you're uh, and testing. And here we can find the MX record and you can also try these attacks against this mail server. Okay. Now, when we have the mail server identified, either via passive scanning like that or via active scanning like that, now we can proceed to try to send emails and try to attack it. Now, usually I use to called send email. And this send email tool does exactly what is uh, is doing it's sending an email and here you can specify a lot of options so that's when i need to send emails that's usually the go-to utility i generally use because it's super easy for me to use and i like the syntax now here you can specify various things which are needed we have the address to which to send an email we have the subject we have the message we have the server import and of course, we have if we need to attach a file, 
if we need to do CC and specify username and password, if it's needed. And that's what mail relay is actually for. So let me showcase how it works. Ideally, in some scenarios, let me first check if I can. What's my email here? My email is testlsec.local. So I need to modify my command. Here I need to, to send my email to test at LSEC local. And I'm going to use my JSmith account. So I'm going to make the phone bigger like that so you can see. I'm using JSmith account. I'm going to send in to test LSEC.local. I'm using the DC as a server. Ideally, you can use the MX record there as a server. And of course, uh, I specify the subject which is test and the message which is test. Now, in that case, I need to also specify credentials. XU for username. In that case, it's uh, jsmith at lsec.local. And XP is going to be my secret pass one. So, on that, you can see the send email was successful. And now, if you go back to here, we're going to see the new email from Jay Smith, and that's the email we just sent. Now, that's nice because right now we can essentially use this mail server to perform two things. First, is send direct phishing campaigns from it, and second, connect it to GoFish and send phishing campaigns from it. But one thing I enjoy testing so much before running any phishing campaigns is the open mail relay. Open mail relay happens whenever the server do not require authentication. And that's more often than you think, guys. If we go to the DC uh, in the mail server configuration, I can open HMail server administrator, type my password, go to settings, go to protocols, go to no actually advanced sorry then ip ranges and then allowed you can see that inside the allowed ip range no smtp authentication is required for both local to local local to external local uh, external to local sorry and external to external so in that case for that mail server these options are quite important because if they are not here if they are disabled like they are now and that's intentional just for testing I can use this mail server to move any email address and to send to any email address. Let me showcase how it works. When the authentication is not needed, this machine acts as a relay, so I can send any email as anyone to anyone. To get you an idea of how bad it is, I can go to my Kali system here and send another email. Now, how I generally test it? I test it by removing the username and password because I do not have access to the mail server settings. But if I can send an email without providing the credentials, then it's fine. In that case, we can see it's fine. So what I can test next is if I can impersonate user. So ideally, in that case, if you have some kind of a mail client where you can see the incoming emails, that's going to be nice. Uh, but in worst case, uh, there's going to be blind attacks, so uh, make a way to find and test it. If not, shoot it blind. So in worst case. So what's my idea now is to see if I can impersonate anyone. So if I go back to Quanto 1, you can see the email received, even though we did not have credentials. So if I go back, I can try specify someone else now. So I can try admin on that. You can see email was sent. You can go here. You can see admin of the local, which again have the email. Now, I hope you guys started to see how bad that can be. Because if I can impersonate any user, you can see the domain is trusted. If not, it's the same domain, it's a trusted domain. But I can impersonate any user from any group or any group from the whole Active Directory which means that I can send extremely legitimate phishing campaigns originating from anyone. So you cannot, you can, you can impersonate on not only admins, but only, uh, but also people from HR, people from sales, people from uh, IT department. Anyone on that active directory can be impersonated if you have this vulnerability. And if you have this vulnerability as an external or outsider, 
you can achieve exactly the same thing because you can send trusted emails. These trusted emails are going to go through their trust infrastructure with their trusted spoofed email and you can achieve the same thing. So when the mail server is exposed, always check for that. And when you're doing internal test, again, always check for that because having the ability to send emails as an admin is, trust me, a big deal. So that's how you test it uh, with send email. There are many more ways on how to uh, try it. For example, with, I think, X uh, Swax, for example. But as I said, a send email is super nice utility because syntax is super user friendly to me. Now, let me showcase how we can also connect that to Goldfish. So let me first make sure I have my Goldfish installed. Let me see if I have it. And I don't. So I can go to OPT. And here I can do clone the Goldfish or download Goldfish. So I can do sudo make dir and Goldfish. All right. Now, sitting to Goldfish, now let me do Goldfish GitHub. Go here, go to the release tab, then go to Linux 64 bit, download that, and you can just download the previous version without the need to compile it. Now, just a quick disclaimer when you need to use Goldfish for real life operations, I strongly suggest to go and always compile custom version of Goldfish. Always make sure to obfuscate it and always make sure to make it custom. Because when we send email, you can see how easy it is to be detected. So I've downloaded that. So what I can do, go to my terminal and do move downwards goldfish to here as sudo, of course. Now do sudo zip goldfish, there it is. I can remove the archive. And here you can do sudo chmod plus x goldfish if, I, if my memory is correct. And you can run sudo and goldfish. That should be it. There it is. Yeah, perfect. So when you run that, uh, goldfish is going to start and you're going to have a uh, SQLite database inside. You're going to have config.json with all your configurations. And you're going to have a default password, which in that case is that. So this is the recent interface for goldfish. So it's browser navigation. You can open a browser, go here, navigate to it, and accept the self-signed certificate. Now here type admin and password, which was just printed out, which in my case is this randomized one. So paste, paste. And now, of course, you need to do a new one. So you do a new one super fast. All right, save password, and there it is. Perfect. Now, what happens is in order to use Goldfish, it has various things that need to be considered. First one is the email template. So what emails we need to send. Then we have a landing page, which is the page when the user clicks the link is going to arrive. We have the sender profile, which is going to be exactly how we're going to send emails. And of course, we have our targets for user and groups. Now, of course, for the sake of testing, we're not going to do any complex phishing things because first, I do not want to get my channel banned because I have several strikes because of this topic. So further phishing videos and further phishing courses are going to be available on Patreon because here in the past I've uploaded various videos about it and I got striked. So no more thanks. Now here uh, we're going to stick to basics and showcase how to chain this vulnerability to Goldfish. So on the one hand side we can send emails as anyone. And now we can also chain that to Goldfish and we can use it to, to fish. So here on the sending profiles, I'm going to go with new profile. I'm going to say something like relay and, and something. In that case, relay, LSEC, local. For example, that's totally up to you. Then the interface type is going to be SMTP. And then here we're going to specify the from. So this is going to be our impersonated address. So of course, you need to do some reconnaissance first. Get the various users, get their groups, get their O's and so on, and make sure to come up with someone who is trustworthy. In that case, let's stick to administrator at lsec.local. By the way, such users do not exist in the Active Directory, admin at lsec.local. So it can be something non-existing. All right. Then we need to specify the host, 172, 60, 60, 50 is my, in my case. 
And here we don't need to specify any username. Now, if there's no mail relay, but you have an access and you have uh, a credentials and authentication, you can place this here, but you cannot impersonate anyone. So that's that's the magic of the relay to impersonate anyone in the Active Directory. So we're going to leave that to be empty. Here we can specify some headers if needed, and we can try to send test email to test at aosec.log. So run that, send it here, wait for it. And there it is, we have administrator at lsec.local. Then we have default email from Goldfish. Now we can see that Goldfish configuration works. And now we can use this Goldfish to set up our email template, to set up our, our landing profile, landing pages, and carry out phishing campaigns against users of this Active Directory. So, uh, you can now click cancel, save profile, and then the rest is magic. Now again, I'm not gonna go over how to launch that thing from scratch because I do not want to get my channel striked again. So for now, I'm planning to close the stream up to this point and for future phishing campaigns, phishing videos, and phishing courses, I'm gonna do a course on Patreon, so be welcome. So as a summarization, I can say that you guys always have to test for such vulnerability because it's one of the easiest ways to carry out a phishing attack. If you don't do that, the way you can carry out a phishing attack is to register a domain, set up a certificate, make sure to have a trusted mail server, specify enough AV directors, make sure to have trusted applications on them, and all these OPSEC kind of things that needs to be done. But if you have a mail AV director, you can bypass all of that. You don't need a certificate in most of the cases. You don't need to set up additional infrastructure. You don't need to set up anything else besides the whole phishing scenario, email, and where to land, because everything else is taken care of. So no matter if the mail server is external or internal, uh, always make sure to test it and always make sure if you can send emails as someone else. As again, this is one of the easiest ways to compromise the domain and uh, again, more things are yet to come. So, yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching. I want to say special thanks to my patrons. This was super short stream. And if you have further appreciation to my work, again, feel free to become my patron. There, I do specific videos only for my patrons, including malware development, malware development uh, configuration for boot teaming. So, essentially, I have a lab. And I show how to build a lab using Elastic with Elastic EDR and how to use this lab for malware scanning, analyzing, and bypassing. I also have a tools that only my patrons have access to, such as my Packer and my Mythic Situ Agent. So if you support me, I can also support you with tools and knowledge, and we all share a lot of experience. Thanks so much. I'm shutting down the stream. Thanks for your time, attention, and I'll see you right in the next one. And Shakstor. Hi, and hope that was useful. Bye-bye, guys, and see you in the next one.